Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in today's second video. We're going to have a look at the ECM WF Extended model for today's second video. So I'm going to go six weeks ahead. It's going to take us pretty much to the end of June, uh, I think. And we're going to be looking at uh, mean cell pressure, 500 millibar height, temperature and precipitation anomalies for the UK and for Ireland for the next six weeks. I should get on that for you. Uh, very shortly, just say that our first video released today was our nice little 7 a.m. upload. We've got the weekend forecast coming up for you uh, in a bit, as well as on a Saturday, your weekend look ahead. And of course, we've got a 10 to 14 day of release later on this afternoon. It'll include all of the regular features. So keep checking back uh, for all of the updates. Please like, share, subscribe, all of that stuff. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Uh, right, okay, let's start off the webcam then. And we're going to start off with the uh, week one. Mean sea level pressure anomaly uh, for the uh, North Atlantic and for Europe. It's going to take us from the 24th through to the 31st of May. So uh, the uh, coming week, next week, I suppose, we'll have an area of uh, high pressure uh, over and to the west and northwest of the UK. And I there'll be a trough of low pressure in over Scandinavia. We should be seeing more of an anti-cyclonic influence there. The only problem is that it will be a bit on the cool side as into the ridge will come like a northerly airstream. But high pressure there should be starting to turn things a little bit dry and breaks out of the very unsettled weather that we've been in. The 500 millibar height anomaly though still looks a little bit on the dodgy side actually. So we've still got higher pressure above average heights, which extrapolates to high pressure, kind of to our, our west and northwest, with a trough of below average heights, low pressure, sinking in, uh, you know, from, from northern uh, Europe into western Europe. So that could actually imply that it's still quite unsettled, uh, to be honest, across uh, northern and western parts of Europe. The temperature only is still cool, which you expect, because uh, the, the winds are still going to be coming in from uh, the north, so below average temperatures for this final week of May could be another very chilly week to say the least with temperatures going down to like three degrees and maybe a bit more than three degrees uh, below average. So a significantly cold and average week coming up for Ireland and the UK is starting to turn drier. So uh, northern and western areas are actually drier than average. I haven't seen that for a little while. Uh, near normal is still slightly above average in the far east and southeast, but the train is definitely there. Things to be drying out next week, even if it's rather cold. Right, so that's week uh, one done. Let's go through to week two, which will take us from the 31st of May to the 7th of June. This one looks more anticyclonic, so we've got high pressure in the Atlantic and it's extending into uh, northern and western Europe as well. Low pressure is up towards Greenland, Iceland, jet stream is uh, up north as well. So there should be quite a lot of dry weather with that. And the change in wind direction to more of a westerly should be rather milder as well. I mean, we'll go overboard with it being particularly warm, but it should be uh, a little bit warmer. The 500 millibar height anomaly uh, looks like this for the first week of June. Again, above average heights, higher pressure extending in from the Atlantic into uh, northern western Europe. Below average heights up towards Greenland and Iceland jet stream pushing northwards as well. So that ridge should bring a reasonable amount of, uh, of dry weather uh, you would have thought. The uh, temperature anomaly for week two, still on the cool of an average side. So, uh, I mean, there is a slight recovery in temperature in that it's not quite as cold in week two as it is in week one, not quite as below average, but nevertheless, still on the cooler to cold of an average side there. Uh, for the uh, week two period, 31st of May to 7th of June. And precipitation-wise, uh, we look like that. So a rather dry of an average week coming up, not just in the UK, from many parts of Western Europe. So that definitely is a drier week, but uh, it's still a little bit on the cool side. Let's see what happens into week three. This takes us from the 7th through to the 14th of June. And then uh, we begin to uh, lose the signal quite a lot. So we've got low pressure towards Greenland, and Iceland and down towards Spain. It looks like the high pressure is moving over towards eastern parts of Europe. And uh, quite what's happening through here, it's not really all that clear. Let's have a look at the 500 millibar height anomaly. That looks a little bit inconclusive as well. Looks like the uh, above average heights are pulling out into the Atlantic and uh, going up towards Scandinavia, down towards Italy. 
So through here, we might be bringing in some energy, I think. This might be a little bit more unsettled, to be honest. But it is a weak signal, so it isn't particularly clear-cut. The temperature anomaly for week three, from 7th to the 14th of June, still a bit on the low side, still a little bit average to cooler uh, than average. It's a little, bit of a, a little bit of a mysterious week, I have to say. And the precipitation anomaly for week three, 7th to 14th of June, Again, quite weak signal, but if anything, probably on the slightly drier than Abney side. So, a little bit of a mysterious week, uh, that one, but probably still rather cool and relatively dry. Week 4 takes us from the 14th to 21st of June. High pressure then is back in, and this time it's centred right in over top of the country. So, that should be uh, a significantly drier and probably warmer week. Let's have a look at the 500 millibar height only, but also... That's an area of above average heights in uh, top of the country. So both mean cell pressure and 500 millibar height anomalies indicating high pressure uh, resuming. Uh, week four temperature anomaly still a bit on the low side, but gradually we're losing those, <laughs> gradually we're losing those blue colours. So by this point, it's possible we might be uh, rather warmer, I would have thought, under that area of high pressure and of course the high pressure dominating the weather the precipitation anomaly very much signaling uh, a drier than average week week five will be the 21st to the 28th of june nothing really doing there from uh, a mean cell of pressure anomaly perspective so i'll just put in a question mark because it isn't particularly clear uh, what's going to be happening there the uh, 500 millibar height anomaly also looks rather mysterious. No uh, signal at all from uh, pressure or height anomaly uh, maps. Week 5 uh, temperature anomaly. If anything, getting a little bit cooler. So that could be a bit of a worry for anybody who wants warmer weather. It does look as though those blue colours are beginning to expand out uh, a little bit. And the uh, week five precipitation anomaly. Again, very weak signals, possibly a little bit on the dry side. It does look so June should be drier, I have to say. There is a strong signal here for June to be uh, a lot drier than May. But, but the temperatures do look like they're a bit of a struggle, to be honest. And then week six, mean cell pressure anomaly, which takes us from the 28th of June to the 5th of July. So actually going into July with this. Again, a uh, very, very weak source. There's a little bit of low pressure just to our northwest. Otherwise, it isn't particularly clear what's happening uh, across northern Europe. The week six, 500 millibar height anomaly. Again, no particular signal that's uh, of any use. The week six temperature anomaly. Uh, still struggling to lift the temperatures up. Average to probably slightly I'm going outside or no signal. Um, but week six precipitation anomaly. Again, very weak signals. It might be starting to turn a little bit more unsettled though. Uh, but again, it's such a weak signal that it's hard to, to say, you know, uh, what's happening there. So I think I think once by the time we get through to the end of June, beginning to, of July, it is very, very, very uncertain. Uh, right then, so uh, that's it for the uh, six weeks extended look at with the ECMWF model uh, for today. So uh, definitely looks like we're going to get some higher pressure as we go into June. We should see significantly drier conditions compared to this wet May. Uh, whether, you know, uh, we see the temperatures becoming particularly warm, I think that is very debatable. Uh, we should see a recovery in temperatures. There's more high pressure around, more drier weather. We should see things becoming a little bit uh, warmer, if nothing else, you know, it should start to feel a bit more like it. But whether we was to, you know, get particularly hot weather or heat wave conditions, I think that is very, very inconclusive on these uh, charts. And it just looks, looks as though we should transition into something a bit drier, a bit warmer, uh, and, and rather more high pressure dominated. But I won't go any further than that. At, uh, at this stage and then later on in June towards the end of June into the beginning of July that is a really uncertain period with, with nothing particularly useful uh, available to draw any conclusions about that period uh, today. Right, so that's it for the ECMDF. If you enjoyed the video, then please can you smash your like button, make sure you subscribe to the channel, you're able to see uh, more videos like this, and uh, drop a comment, let us know what you think. Don't forget to check out the 7am uh, forecast, and we're going to be back later on with a week ahead forecast, and also 
uh, the 10 to 14 day the updates as well. So keep checking back to the channel for all of the updates. Uh, but for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.